Thank you that you would resurrect us today, Lord God, in our lives, Lord. Lord, no matter what we go through, no matter what we've been told, Lord God, I thank you that you would resurrect us above that, Lord God, because your name reigns, Lord, above all things this year, Lord yes. God, and today and tomorrow and forever, Lord. Yes. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are here, Lord God. I ask that you would bless them here today, Lord God. No matter what they're going through, Lord, I ask that you would minister to them and touch them, Lord God. Give them a word, Lord, that they may need to hear today, Lord God. Let them not leave the same as they walked in, Lord God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you even for the children here today, Lord, as they hear a message, Lord, even as they're excited for the Easter eggs, Lord God, but that they would understand that it's about you, Lord God. Yes. That's just an appet a little treat, Lord, a little special dessert, Lord, the, the eggs, Lord. But most of all, Lord, I thank you that each and every one would resurrect our lives in you today, Lord God, that we would leave knowing for sure and secure, Lord, that we are with you, Lord. And again, we just thank you. We just praise you in Jesus' name. In the church. Amen. 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 Thank you, Van Best. You may be seated. Man, that was, those songs were exciting. I mean, we could sing those all over and, and just basically go home. <laughs> those were great. I love those songs. My gosh, didn't you love those songs, those old songs? Praise God. It's, it's good that uh, a lot of people are here and friends that are visiting. New friend Mary's here and and others, Victor from far away, and all of you and that haven't seen you well, it's so good to see all of you, and uh, you that are viewing and coming in later, of course, this is a special day. Like I said earlier, all of Christendom is celebrating this very day. Could you imagine when, when Mary Magdalene, she realized that Jesus, by the angel saying he's not here, she ran with all of her might to the other disciples the apostles the 12 that were hiding and then when peter and john they rushed back there is it true and it was empty the tomb was empty because jesus wasn't there he was now going to live in our hearts you know we do something here in the church and and uh we kind of coined this uh passage out of ezekiel chapter 20 verse 30 and god said he looked for a person to build a wall and because there's a break in the wall. And sometimes in our lives, there's breaks in our life. And God says, I'm looking for somebody. Well, who's the somebody? It's you or me to stand in the place. Sometimes maybe it's just for yourself or maybe you're going through something and you're hurting. And so we like to do here just about and part of our liturgy is we, we have what we call our, our gap ministry, our wall ministry to, for you to, to pray and to then cast your care in the Lord. You know, one of the things I, I think, Wednesday night is very important, but I also look at this part of the service as really important because, you see, you have a place to get involved. Okay, we had a wonderful time of worship. The songs were outstanding. I mean, I just loved it where we got to sing these songs that are just sung through the church around the world. But here at this time, you get to participate for you before the Lord. I look for a person. Ezekiel said, I look for a man or a person to stand in the gap because the gap is something in your life has been broken. And maybe it's you're, you're struggling financially. Maybe you need healing. Maybe your heart's broken. A loved one has gone to be with the Lord. But friends, you're going to hear this morning that loved one is doing well. We may be heavy hearted, but, you know, there again, you still need the support of the spirit and loved ones around you to say, you can do this. Keep going. And then then the other one is that relationships. One of the things that Jesus said just before he went to the cross, this is one that I share many times. In fact, I don't like doing funerals. I love weddings. So if anybody has weddings, a wedding, let me know. But I mean, if you have to have a celebration of someone's love life who's gone on, and it's this, that Jesus said this before he was going to lay his life down, forgive. Forgive others. We hurt one another. That's why Jesus... We hurt God, but we also, when we hurt one another, we hurt God too. And so there's relationships that are broken. There's people that should be together in their marriages. There should be. There's people that are, that are just out there. Forgive them and pray for them. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand one more time, and I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to ask you, with your, with your heart, I mean with all your heart, whatever you're going through, because we all go through stuff, we're human. We're not in heaven yet. We go through stuff. You look in the mirror, it's like, my goodness, I look better than I did last year. No, that's not the truth. Usually we start to age, right? And I mean, these little ones are so beautiful. 
They too will look like daddy and, and mommy. But God wants you to be lighter in heart what you're going through. You know, I hope that even what you heard this morning, the songs, lightened your heart. Maybe even in the, the message of coming, it'll help your heart. And then even when you see the eggs collected, your heart will be so happy. It's like, this is all about Jesus. But first of all, let's unload some stuff. And what is that stuff? What you're carrying. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm meek and I'm lowly in heart, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This world has a heavy burden. Give your, your burdens to the Lord. I'm going to ask when I pray, you take a moment of silence and you think what you're going through. Maybe something at school, maybe a big thing that's going to happen. Give it to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the songs of celebrating you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you came, that we can follow you, your example of love and forgiveness. And Lord, you see where there is always such needs. But you are Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. There's people here struggling with provisions. Lord, I pray that you'd meet their needs. And Lord, there's others that, are, that need healing, such as my wife who had an operation, or continued healing. There's others that have backs or they need other operations. Lord, we would be so pleased. What you did like to Elsa where they opened her up and they couldn't find nothing. Lord, we would pray for healing. And if we have to do the doctor thing, and so be it, Lord. Thank you for a time that we have them. And Lord, you see relationship. Relationship is so important to you, Lord. That's where you came because there's broken relationship of separation of, because of our stubbornness our rebellion, our disobedience to your spirit to say, look to me. Forgive us, Lord, and now that we would forgive others as well. But there's other things in this room, Lord, that you want to take off of our heart. And it's up to them that are standing in your presence, Lord, that we would give it to you. My friends, would you give the Lord? The Bible says, cast your care on the Lord because he cares for you. Not just a church, but you individually. That's the God you serve. Would you do, do that now? Take a moment and say, Lord, I cast this care on you, whatever it is. Father, Abba, Papa, Daddy, I thank you that you made a way of escape for humanity, and that's through your son, Jesus, that straight and narrow path that you, Jesus, you're that trail to the Father's heart. You're the Lord of glory. You're our Savior. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say amen. amen. Tell the person next to you, glad to see them. Amen. Victor, good to see you again. <laughs> tell, tell, the, tell the bride I said hi to Dea. Dea, yeah. Oh, man, it's good to see you. And, and Margaret, she's, she's one of my best friends. You count on her. She, she went out yesterday. Boy, she knocked it down. She almost locked us out of the car, though. Tell them about that one. <laughs> Danny, I saw you come in. I'm so glad to see you, Dan. Oh, man. Gosh, it's good to see you. Awesome. How's the boys doing? Everyone's good. good. Brian's working. Okay. Cool. I'm good to see you. Oops. Hey, John, hi. <laughs> I did. Good. Good to see you. Talk to you after service. Sure. Okay. Hey. Hey. Is Sev coming? Oh. Man, it's so glad to see you. Amen. Look at this crew over here. I, man. Oh, these guys. Hi, honey. Good to see you and all of you. My buddies. You know, I, boy, these guys don't get sugared up. We're sorry about that. <laughs> Good to see you, ladies. Amen. Just a, a few announcements this morning. Um, again, I just want to encourage the ladies. Remember the women's uh, study on Monday nights via Zoom. It's, they're going through the 12 uh, characteristics of a godly woman. Uh, um, if you want to know how to get involved, you can see Sister Laura ask her questions as well. 
And we have our men's Bible study on Thursday night downstairs at 7 o'clock. Again, the women's Bible study is at 7 o'clock too. Um, men's Bible study on Thursday night was actually pretty awesome. It was totally different. It just the atmosphere was different. I encourage you men to come. It was just an awesome time that we had on Thursday. Amen. It was very different. And uh, also remember uh, Wednesday night prayer. Our world needs a lot of prayer. We need prayer our, as ourselves because of what's going on in our world to, to stand. Again, so again, I can't encourage you any more than I've been. Wednesday night is so important at 7 o'clock here to pray. We're not only praying for our needs, but we're praying for the needs of the world in other countries, everything. Again, like I said many times, Barbara's. we got to pray for Barbara's. this administration, Barbara's. this president, Barbara. regardless of how we feel of the man and his administration. The Bible tells us we need to pray for our leaders. Pray for our governor. Pray for our state. You know, there's a lot of bills that they want to pass where they want to take all the parents' rights away. We need to pray against that because parents, you ain't going to have no rights if you allow these bills to pass. So, again, even in our school, the curriculum that they want to teach, this is stuff that's influencing our kids. So that's why we pray. And pray for our pastors because one day we might not be able to share the truth of what's really out there. We're going to tie our hands. And you can see it now. They're trying to tie to snuff out the Christian community because we're speaking the truth. So, again, like I said, Wednesday is so important when it comes to prayer. And also remember Love Life, where we're praying for the unborn child. We're doing our prayer walk April 15th, which is this coming Saturday at 830 right here in Pomona on uh, Gary, I mean, uh, McKinley and Orange Grove, that church. You want to get your, your steps in and, and your prayer time, come in. You don't have to speak to no one, like I said. You walk and you pray, and that's all you do. And the homeless. And remember the homeless? They went out Saturday uh, to give out bags. We were here Friday packing bags for them. So, again, remember the homeless ministry. If you want to get involved in that, you can see Sister Lana. Ask her how you can donate it, uh, on that as well. Amen? Amen. Um, Thank you for all the donated eggs, Ms. Barbara says. So remember all that. Amen? Amen. How many know it's good to give to God? Amen. Amen. You can never outgive God. You know, uh, on Thursday I was talking to the lady that I put my deferred comp in my second retirement in. And I'm looking, we're looking at, at, at the stock market and it's up and down. And, and she's telling me, oh, this, that, like that. And I, but you know what? The one stock market that never goes down, and that's the God's kingdom market. Amen. Like I said many, many times, through the recession in 2007-8, when everything was crashing, I was getting furloughed our time, our, and everything, but my wife and I still gave our 10% of whatever we were making. I even took a $6 pay cut on top of all that, and we still have our house today because of him. Not of our doing, because of him. And that's why I encourage you guys, trust in the Lord when it comes, especially in the times we're living, the gas, the eggs, all that. God will provide. The gas bill in your home, God will provide, but you've got to trust in him and believe in him. No matter what your finances look like, trust in him and he'll make a way. Amen? Amen. Let's pray for our morning tithes and offering. Dear Lord, we come before you, Lord, and again, we thank you for the opportunity that we have, Lord, to sow into your kingdom, Lord God. Lord, I thank you that we're able to give, Lord God, and I ask that if, as we give, Lord, it multiply for your kingdom and for your glory, Lord. Lord, I ask that you bless those who are able to give and especially bless those that aren't able to give, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying, but they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. 
they crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday's come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday, but let me tell you something, Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday, Jesus is buried, a soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. Amen. That is awesome, isn't it? I love seeing that. Sunday has come 2,000 years ago for you and I. Jesus came back because he loves us and he has purpose. Well, we're going to be looking at some places in the Bible. I hope everybody uh, has uh, some notes that we passed out and uh, that where we're, we're going to be going out of, Ro- uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15, just eight verses where according to the scriptures, Jesus died and he rose again. So if you don't have um, the notes, well, well, we'll talk about those for you as I turn my computer back on. And uh, You have in your notes the title of this sermon, The Gospel of Jesus Christ in His Death and Resurrection out of the text, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 8. And you see the theme there. And the theme, it is this. East reveals the one big problem with man is sin. And the big blessing for man's redemption from sin is new life through Christ. Also the Gospels, and this is what we're going to be looking at. Also the Gospels, according to the Scriptures of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, in which also you are saved. That last few verses, also which you are saved, comes through the very passage we will be looking at. So, here we go. And uh, I want to look at three points. You have those in your notes, and that is for our viewing audience here. Declaring, point one, the gospel of truth. We'll be looking at verse one and two. Point two, declaring the gospel of, that Christ died and rose from the dead. Verse three and four. And point three, declaring the gospel by others who saw Jesus' resurrection. And that's the interesting part too. I won't read uh, those four things to remember because I'm going to bring them up at the end. But it's interesting that that, well, before we go, I want to just read a proposition. A proposition is this. It's an if and a then. I, I sometimes put some propositions in through my sermon, but I usually bring them up in the front. And this proposition goes like this. Believing in Jesus Christ 
and His resurrection opens to us the beginning of one's life of love, peace, and power to live for God. Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead. Therefore, we now have God's gift. Who is Jesus? That's our gift. Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. So now let us walk in this light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, with understanding that we know. You know, it's interesting that, uh, of course, this is Easter and around the world we're celebrating, but do you know that so, there's a lot of people, even Christians don't believe in the resurrection that Jesus rose from the, from the grave. They don't believe it. It's like you're a Christian and you don't believe in the resurrection. It's true. And of course, a lot of people that aren't believers, it's just, it's hogwash. It's, how can you believe that? But you know, there's, there's so much evidence. 2,000 years later, we have evidence that we're still celebrating. Christians around the world are celebrating Jesus Christ. It's significant. And it's hard for even Christians to grasp that how can God resurrect a human body? But see, Jesus is God. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And before Jesus was born, they saw humanity sin. And so there's got to be a redemptive move by God. A redemptive move to come for you and I. But the problem is, is that so many people, they, they think at this time, even that we celebrate every, every Easter, oh, it's boring, it's repetitious. And that's just too bad, because it, you will never be bored from heaven. There's a story about a little boy, he's four years old, and his name is Colton Burpo. Colton Burpo. And I watched this movie, maybe some of you have seen it, Heaven is for Real. And this little Colton, he had a, 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 an appendix break, and they were operating on him. And so in this process of this operation, Colton goes to heaven. A little four-year-old boy. How many kids are four years old in here? There's some in here. Little kids, they can't hear. Them. But maybe you're three, four. Maybe you might hear. A little boy, four years old, went to heaven. And so the, when he came back after the operation, he says, Daddy, I, I saw these things. And his dad was an Episcopal uh, pastor. And so even as a pastor, he's going, what's going on? I mean, he, he's starting to talk about things. And little Colton sees a, a picture of this young man. And this picture of this young man was Colton's dad. But Colton's dad had just died. And he was an old man when his son saw him, the, the pastor. And he says, that's the man I saw in heaven. He was in the beauty of his youth. You see, there's people here that are still struggling with loved ones that have lost. Friends, I say this many times. At, at really, at many funerals, I say, wherever they're at, especially as they live many years, they're now in the beauty of their youth. Jesus died at 33 and a half. He died in the beauty of his youth. Little Colton, when he was there, he was talking about, I saw Jesus, Daddy. And he said, Daddy, I saw him. I, I, I saw Jesus, you know, because he hears the stories like, the, like Sunday school, and they, they teach about Jesus. And, and what happened was that Colton said, Daddy, I, he, he had scars in his hands. You see, there's only one person that's going to be scarred up in heaven, and that's Jesus. He's going to have scars. In fact, you say, well, how do you know that? When Jesus rose from the grave with that after that third day, he appeared to his disciples, and one wasn't there. You probably know if you know your Bible. His name was Thomas. He got the nickname Doubting Thomas. He says, I'm not going to believe that that happened. I saw him die on that cross. I saw him come to the ground. I saw what they did to my Jesus, who I followed. And so, Jesus appeared to 10 of the disciples. One of the disciples was Judas, and he betrayed Jesus. But Thomas wasn't there. So Jesus, he came back, and all the disciples were together, and all of a sudden, Jesus had a beeline for Thomas. Thomas, here I am. Put your, your, hands in the fing put your fingers in my hands when you said, I'm not going to believe unless I touch his hands and put my hand in the side where they speared you. And Jesus says, go ahead, Thomas. Jesus has those same scars today for you and I. And when Thomas saw Jesus, you know what he said? He didn't, he didn't do 
the thing that he was so arrogant. I am not going to believe unless this happens to me to see this. He just saw Jesus. And he says, my Lord, my God. Friends, when we see Jesus, one day we will. We're not going to be asked, why did you do this? And why did you do that? You just know, but you'll see him in the beauty of his youth. And you will see yourself too in that glorious way. Not only is getting back to Colton again, it was interesting because the mother was even doubting. And Colton said, Mommy, I saw my sister in heaven. And Mom said, What? You never seen your sister. We never had, you never saw my other sister. Your other. So you have one sister here. She said, No, the one in heaven. She had a miscarriage. She said, What was her name? And, and Colton's mom said, we never named him. He says, I know, because I asked her, and she said, I don't have a name. But she was there. I also had an experience with a friend. Her name was Sandy, and she told me the same thing. She, too, had an experience, a near death. She was on the operating table, and she, she went to heaven. She went to the same high school I did. Sandy is now in heaven. But, and I would visit her. I was doing some graduate work, and uh, I would stay there while I was doing my, my graduate work. And I, every time I'd go there, Sandy, would you tell me that story again? Because it gave me goosebumps just thinking, you were in heaven, you saw your children. She had miscarriages, and women have miscarriages. Ladies, those babies are in heaven, and that's how we stand for the right to life. We love life, and we will, we will protest that to say stop the murder. But those children are in heaven. God has a purpose, and that's why he came, because he loves us. In fact, when Jesus rose from the grave for mankind, he came because he loves us and he wants you to know that the Father gave Jesus. The great uh, verse, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? Not just gave, give a son to be born. We celebrate Christmas. He gave his only begotten son. He went as a sacrificial lamb. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. To the world, they say, that's foolishness. That's crazy. But God, not with God. And friends, one day, whether you believe in God or not, you're here. One day, you will see Him. And you will bow and you will say, you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess. It does not matter if you believe in Him or not. You will see Him. And one day, you also will resurrect. Some to the living and some to the dead. Every grave will open up, the book of Revelation says. Say, well, what about us? Jesus is that first fruit. But one day, every grave will open up. But if you don't know the Lord and you could care less about him, friends, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And that's why Jesus came, because God says he wants none to perish, but all to come to repentance. Lord, I'm not the, I'm not the king. I'm not the, you know, me, myself, and I, the one who, who matters more than anything. Humility goes a long way, and humility is open to be taught, and humility is open to, to understand that God loves you. Well, let's look at the verse that we're going to be looking at, and we're going to look at eight verses, and it's interesting. I saw this uh, years ago, but it, it, in, in one verse, it shows the full gospel. And some people say, well, what's the gospel all about? Some people use that word gospel. Well, it's just the gospel. It could be the gospel about your word. Well, I'm giving you the gospel. You don't even know what the gospel is. And I'll, we'll look at the gospel. Here's the gospel. So would you do me a favor, and for the Lord, would you stand one more time as we read the word of God out of respect to God's word? <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 8. Paul the apostle is writing a letter to the Corinthian people about the resurrection. And so he says this, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, Here's the gospel, which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which you also are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, here's the gospel, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. We'll break that down a little bit later. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas. Cephas is Peter, the Apostle Peter. That's Cephas. And then by the twelve. By the way, they came, and after Judas hung himself, there was another one, took his place, his name was Matthias. And after that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. Can you imagine? 
Five, he doesn't exist. 500 people say, I saw him. Of whom the greater part remain to this present, but some have fallen asleep. When you see that word fallen asleep, they died. In other words, they're not fallen asleep. Is they're just, that's a word we use sometimes for death. And after that, he was seen by James. James was the apostle. This, James was Jesus' brother. He did not believe in Jesus. Did you know that? He had James, Jude, Joseph, and uh, another brother, and several sisters. These were half sisters, uh, half brothers and sisters. But James didn't believe. And that's why he brought it up. He says, And seen by James, then by all the apostles. Then, last of all, he was seen by me. The Apostle Paul also, as one born out of due time. Father, I ask that you'd help us as we see your word and look at this beautiful portion of Scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. You know, here, you know, by, like I said, the gospel, you say, what's the gospel all about? Well, the gospel, it's, it's good tidings. It's good news. That's what you, some of you have Bibles that say the good news. That's what the gospel represents. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. By the way, when Jesus came into the world, he was born He was born, born through a woman. The Holy Spirit impregnated. And I know how that happened, but God can do anything. And here Mary has, she's pregnant. And when Jesus came to full development and came forth into the world, the angels brought forth a declaration to these people these uh, shepherds, and they says, we bring you glad tidings. In other words, good news. Good news, the Savior is here, and it's to all people, not just the Jews, but that's the gospel of good news. Gospel is good news or God's spell, but it's good tidings. And so we gather together to celebrate the good news that Jesus has risen from the dead. But also, too, as we see, uh, Satan's going to say, no, that's not true. You know, he's, he has a way of saying, Ah, go to church, but you know, I, I don't have time for that because I'm not really sure. I mean, I've asked Jesus in my life and I'm still stuck. Friends, you keep focused on Jesus. There's a scripture in Isaiah 26, 3, whose mind is stayed on thee. He will keep you in a perfect peace because you trust him. Trust him, even when we go through stuff. But Satan's going to tell us, ah, don't believe it. Don't repent. Don't, you, you, don't need to, you don't need him. Friends, I need him, and I know you do too. The whole world needs Jesus, unless he comes, by the way. We would destroy ourselves. And I, I don't want to be grim here because it's a day of celebration. But it's the truth. To you young people that are just in college or in high school, know the Lord. Serve him. I was 19 years old, a broken young hippie, riding a, in a magic bus, became a Jesus bus. But when I found him, I said, I'm going to follow you. I speak to you young people, and even wherever you're at, follow him. He loves you. He has a purpose for you. But here also in Ephesians chapter 2, 1, it says this, And he who has quickened us, who we were dead in our trespasses and sin, he's quickened you if you're open to Jesus. He'll quicken your heart to know him. But friends, if you look at him like many do in this world, ah, he don't exist, and what has he done for me? Friends, the gospel of Jesus Christ is here for you and I. That's what he did on Good Friday. I love that, that presentation we just saw. I mean, Jesus was willing. Everybody abandoned Jesus. And by the way, many are abandoning him today. Even some Christians. Don't be one of them. It's not a warning. It's a plea. It's a plea from a friend to a friend. Don't abandon Jesus. Because he cares. He has such purpose and plan. And this isn't all that there is. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your wherever you're at. Enjoy because that's a gift of God. It is. Everything's a gift of God here. But what lie beyond? Cross those rivers. When your train stops, you're going to see him. You will see the wounds done for you and I and loved ones. Friends, be determined. Lord, I want to follow you. You can, amen? You can with his help. But if you're going to go it alone, well, God gives you help. Don't go it alone. We have, the church is here. A lot of people say, well, Sunday's here, and uh, I don't have time. Imagine if all of a sudden you're in great need, and, and Jesus is walking by like oh, the religious Pharisees and, and the Levite person. I don't have time to help you. 
And here comes a stranger. He's called a Samaritan. That's what we call our homeless ministry, our Samaritan ministry. We don't want to be religious and say, I don't have time for that. Who's helping me? See, that's when we get into narcissism. Me, myself, and I. That's narcissism. You look in the mirror and you say, oh, how beautiful I am. Oh, don't disturb my beautiful image. Satan wants to do that. Jesus would stop for any one of us. A guy by the name of Barnabas was crying out, Jesus, Jesus, help me. He was blind. And they said, shut up, Barney. Be quiet. He's, he forget it. He, Jesus, Jesus, he yells more. Jesus. And Jesus stops the crowd. And he, he goes over to Barnabas and says, what do you want? I want to see. Friends, whatever you're going through, Jesus will help you see. Point two, declaring the gospel that Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead. You know, according to the Scriptures, the Bible tells us that, that this time is revealed in Scripture. According to the Scriptures, I deliver you. Paul says, I deliver you, not out of my opinion. We have, as Bam said, the Bible. It tells us. Jesus then all of a sudden, wow, where did he come from? If you know your Bible, you see, you see him. You see him actually in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15. When Satan came, and he's called Lucifer, but the serpent, he tempted Eve. Oh, if you eat this, you'll be beautiful. You'll be like God. And it tastes pretty good. And she forgot who she was. She wanted her own identity, but not staying in the identity of God. And so... It happened that when God come walking in the garden, just as he walks with you, just like the song we say, walking in the garden alone with Jesus. Jesus, I mean, God said, where are you, Adam? Adam means male, female. Adam in the Hebrew means male and female. And then after the woman, she called her woman. We don't call our, we don't call our wives, hey, woman. They won't like that, so don't do that. But, uh, yeah, don't snap and, but anyway, the truth of the matter was that she had children. Her name was changed to Eve, the mother of all living. That's where her first parents came from. And so he told Lucifer, he says, he says, he says you're going to bruise. He says, he gave a curse. He says, you will bruise this one who's going to come. You're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to crush your head. How many of you have ever seen the movie Passion of Christ with Mel Gibson? The, one of the greatest scenes is when Jesus is in the garden for us, but he's Father, and he's, he knew what he's going to do, and Satan's wanting him to back off of this. And Jesus, I love when his eyes got steely, and he just looked, and he looked down, and there was a, a, a type of this serpent, and Jesus looked, and he just crushed his head. Jesus crushed Lucifer at the cross. He died for the sins of the world. The sins of the world are forgiven, but you know what? If you don't repent, you'll die in your sin. So well, how, how do I don't figure that out? Friends, there's a part for us to play. And the play is this play into God's purposes. And his purpose is that you would understand that he died for you. You repent and live for him. And enjoy your life, every part of your life. It might live, you might live into your 90s. You might live to where you're, you may not live out of the womb. Those that are living didn't make it out of the womb, by the way, I believe they're right in heaven. They don't go to, to limbo. They go right to heaven. I don't understand a lot of stuff, but I know this. God is the God of all life. And so we have this Christ who rose. By the way, when he rose, the Bible says he's the first fruit. First fruit of what? I have a lot of trees. I have eight fruit trees. And I see all these little buds growing up. And one of these days, I'm going to eat that first plum but there's going to be a lot of plums following. And Jesus is that first fruit. And one day, you too will have a body that's going to resurrect to life. And if you don't believe in him, well, that's up to you. It's up to you. You don't have to do anything any preacher tells you. You don't have to do anything God tells you. Because God made you that way to have a choice. I've used other terms, and I, I don't want to use those terms anymore because my wife says, you can't do that. And I won't. If you want to ask about the terms, I'll tell you downstairs. But according to the Scriptures, what's according to the Scriptures? Isaiah 53. If you ever read I, for homework, read Isaiah 53. This one, he came and he, in the beauty of his youth, 
they took him, as we saw in this, this video, and they beat him, and they, they, they stroked him with, with, with whipping and, and the crown of thorns, and eventually crucified him. We also see in Psalms 22, according to the Scriptures, it says, and they nailed my, they, they, they pierced my hands and my feet, and they mocked at me. That's what the Bible says. We have that truth that Jesus would do this. And that's according to the scriptures that Apostle Paul is talking about. Jesus was not a victim of these circumstances, by the way. I want you to see something. Please listen to this. He was not a victim of the circumstance. He wasn't caught up beyond his control. He did say this at the garden. He says, if I could, I could bring six legions of angels to help me. He talked about this in a Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And Moses and Elijah appeared to them, and he said, and, and the Scripture says, and they talked about the death. In fact, the Jewish Pharisees, they did not put Jesus on the cross. It wasn't the Romans that put him on the cross, but yes, they did. But here's the one who put him on the cross because he loves us. Listen to this. It's in Scriptures. Out of the Gospel of John, John 10, 17, and 18. Therefore, my Father loves me. This is Jesus talking. Because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. Resurrect. Listen. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Jesus did that. It, you, you know, He came for that very purpose. He came to die on a cross for our sins and raise to life for you and I. Billy Graham said this, because what separates us. Billy Graham had these comments about the disease that's running rampant in our, our nation. Well, <laughs> how about humanity? Listen to what Billy says. Billy Graham. We're suffering from one disease in the world. Our basic problem is not a race problem. Our basic problem is not a poverty problem. Our basic problem is not a war problem. Our basic problem is sin. That is a heart problem. We need to get the heart changed, the heart transformed. That's why Jesus came, to give you and me a transformed heart. Wherever you're at in your life, Jesus has a purpose. He loves you, and he has a purpose. He didn't come to make you religion. By the way, I was religious up till I was 19 years old. We had to go to church. Maybe some of you, well, I got to go to church. I had to go to church too. But when I met Jesus, I was going to follow him. I told my future wife to be. It was like a ladder that came down from heaven. And I'm, it's like I grabbed that bottom ladder rung and something's just holding me. I'm going to climb it. By the way, I'm still on the bottom ladder rung. He's holding me. And he'll hold me to the day. He says, Bob, your train has stopped. Come on board. Come to heaven. Friends, you will have that train stop in your life. But trust him with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. Lord, you gave me life. You gave me my wife. You gave me my children. Whatever, trust him. He has a purpose. God will reveal that part to you too, that you are separated when you are rebellious and you just say, I don't need him. All men sin against God. They all do. See, I don't... People don't believe that God even exists, but the Bible does tell us out of the book of Hebrews that God will reward you if you diligently seek Him. He doesn't mean if you really get religious. I'm not in religion, like I said. But when I came to the Lord, May 25th, 1971, and I lost all my friends. My bus that was once a magic bus became a Jesus bus. 1961 Volkswagen bus, which I had it today. Because you know what I had? I put on this bus. I put on the front of the, the old bus of the... Volkswagen, I put a, a saying, Jesus loves you. But I didn't put it where you can read it. You had to struggle to see it. I put it backwards so in your rearview mirror you'd see Jesus loves you with a little exclamation heart. He loves you and I. Paul said that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to scriptures. The Father raised Jesus and Jesus willingly did this. Jesus accepted his sacrifice. Lord, not my will, your will be done. I came as a sacrificial lamb. That's when the, John the Baptist, when he, before Jesus was baptized, John, by the Spirit, he saw Jesus and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's why Jesus cried in the cross. 
It's finished. Your sins have been forgiven. It's finished. When Jesus is on this cruel cross behind us, yes, it's a symbol of victory for you and I because your sins are finished, are, are done. And when you do mess up, and you will, and I will, the blood of Jesus will cleanse you again. Lord, I'm sorry. I want to start again. By the way, he's the only one that has risen from the dead. Confucius didn't rise. Muhammad didn't rise from the dead. Buddha didn't rise from the dead. All these great leaders of human religion are dead. Not Jesus. He's alive. And he wants to live in you and I. Point three, declaring the gospel by others who saw Jesus' resurrection. Like I said in the opening, that many people are saying, well, he don't exist. And but it's, you know, Sada did a research. There's a lot of Christians who don't believe that the resurrection actually happened. What? They don't believe it. I mean, how can you be a Christian? In fact, Paul wrote all of, here's some more homework. First, read all of 1 Corinthians 15. We're just reading the first eight verses. Because Paul made an emphatic plea. The resurrection happened. But many people, even Christians, don't believe it. Friends, it did happen. And we're talking about it 2,000 years later. But he was seen by the great Peter, too, who denied him. By the way, you know, Peter denied him three times. I will die for you, Jesus. I will do anything for you. And Jesus said, Peter, I prayed for you. Because Satan wants to sift you. Do you know he tries to sift me and you? But we people praying for you. And the Lord also prays for you. He does. And Peter came back after he denied him because he was so emphatic. I will never deny you. And when a little girl, two little girls came to Peter, you were with them. I don't, I don't get away from me, little girl. And he started to see him. I don't know him. Get away. And Jesus, he made a special invitation to Peter when Peter said, I, after the resurrection, I'm going to go fish and I just just don't know what to do. I'm just going to go fishing. A bunch of went fishing with him. If you like fishing, that's a strong precedence of, hey, if the apostles did it, go fishing. But what happens? Jesus appeared to him, and Peter asked him, Peter, do you love me? You know I love you, Jesus. Then feed my lambs. Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. And then he asked him a third time, and Jesus said, tend my sheep. He's telling Peter, you have messed up. Bob, you messed up, but come back. I love you. Don't let Satan so you there's there's all you, you can't turn back to God. Whatever you've gone through, you can't turn. There's no sin that's not forgivable. I don't care what it is. There is one sin, the Bible does say, if you if you curse the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit moves like he did on the face of the earth. He saw that it was void and he gave it life. The Spirit, moved upon, the Spirit moves upon you and I to give you and I life. But there again, He's not going to make you do what you don't want to do. Let the Holy Spirit move in your life. And here's, here's how we can move in this great way. In fact, Paul talked to, in the book of Romans. And we pass this out. We pass this out to the homeless, Mary, too. We didn't have them with us this last time, but we have these. We need to print them. But we put this, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Listen to this, because in this passage has the resurrection. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, it's not, well, I raise my hand, or I stand up for you, I come down the aisle, I lay my, that's all good. But if it's not from the heart, it's a script. Well, just, well, the pastor's going to ask you to raise your hands. Okay, now don't forget, tell them everybody raise your hand. That's a script. But it was from the heart, and it says this, for with, the, for with the heart one believes to right standing or righteousness with God, and with the mouth confession is made. Jesus knew he would be raised from the dead. It tells us all four Gospels talk about the resurrection. Well, how should we, friends, look at Jesus today? He's Lord and he's Savior. What are you going to do with Jesus who you know about? What are you going to do? I mean, this is, it's, we can celebrate and, and have all kinds of great music and everything, and it's like I was really entertained. But what about when you walk out like Bam says, how is it going to affect you? Well, I did my thing. I came because my, my wife told me to come. I came because my, my husband told me to come. Perhaps you're curious about Jesus. I'm always curious about, Lord, I want to know you more. 
wondering why the world is so caught up in the simple man named Jesus. Because he'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. And it's almost unspeakable, the Bible says, and it'll be full of his glory. Somehow, you just know that you just know that you just know he is for real. Amen? He is the real deal. Maybe, maybe you've heard the gospel story. The gospel is that he died and he rose. And he took it upon himself, Jesus did, to become a human like these little babies that are, that are here. They're so precious. Jesus was that age too. And so on your notes, and you have them, you that are viewing, I'll read those last parts. Four things to be of importance. You decided that the idea of God coming to look for you is too bizarre. Like Jesus' death for you and his resurrection for you. Or you can walk away like so many, or you can accept him today. B. Then we can walk with Jesus if you accept him. Listen to his voice. God the Father loves you and me and all mankind and gave Jesus a son to die on a cross and then raise Jesus up three days later. See, Jesus Christ died on your behalf. If you have not accepted Jesus today as your personal Savior and Lord, this, these are my words. I didn't, I didn't uh, copy these. It's from my heart. Oh, please. Please, I beg you. Open your heart to Jesus. And when you do, You'll walk away, like Bam said, a different person. And maybe you've been away from Jesus. Oh, please, rededicate your heart today. What is a stupid service all about if it's not about life-giving to you and to me? It's not worth coming again if, it doesn't, if Jesus doesn't give us life. Then and now, you will live a new life of acceptance, peace, and joy in Jesus. And this is from our Heavenly Father, from the heart of God, from the kopos. It's a Greek word called kopos is from the heart of God, the kopos from His very heart to you and I. The Father's invitation is, take my son. Listen to him. Mary said that too, and I tell many of my Catholic friends, I do what Mary says. Whatever he says, I will do at the wedding of Canaan. And the Father at the Mount of Transfiguration, when they didn't know what to do, the Father was there, and he said, listen to my son. And so from the heart is John 3.16. If you'd stand with me, please. And when you receive the forgiveness of your sins and walk in this new resurrection of life, Jesus Christ, you will be a new creation. Old things will pass away and all will become new. Friends, the Lord sees your heart. I'm not going to be asking for hands. You know your heart. And maybe it's time to get, come back to the Lord in that one sense. You have the Lord. You've said yes to Him. It's a matter of, Lord, I'm sorry. I repent. I believe, Lord, that You died for me and You rose for me. Come into my life. And if you need to rededicate, Lord, I just rededicate to You. I've been away like the prodigal son and daughter. And the father standing like that prodigal father waiting, waiting for you, Bob, to come. May 25th. 1971, and I come. And it's like, whoa, when I think of Jesus, there's such a peace. And I don't understand it completely, but I sure love it. Friends, as you bow your hearts with me. Father, we thank you for this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way in the hearts of the children and the older children, whatever age they are. Tell Lord that they would be open to say, Lord, yes, I believe. I repent, come into my life. And Lord, if they need to come back to you, then Lord, let that be a prayer as well. Thank you for this morning, Lord. Speak to our hearts, not as Bam said, not just here, but when we go home, Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' lovely name we pray, and everyone would say, amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We have food downstairs, and we have a whole lot of eggs for the kids. So I don't know how that's all going to go, but just have fun, fun, fun.